I would probably work better high on crack cocaine than I would when I'm drunk. I mean... <laughs> Welcome to Things We Talk About, where we have conversations that matter. Yes, we do. <laughs> I am your host, Randall Thomas. With me, by my side, always and forever, is my dear friend, wait, Lazarus Kane. What's going on, man? Not, not a whole lot. Happy to be here. I'm excited, dude. Yeah, yeah. How's your day going? So far, so good. This is the, the first official episode of Things We Talk About. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Probably. I, Probably. I would go, we hope so. <laughs> I would go out there and say yes. Now, okay. we've recorded something so far that we've kind of scrapped because it's not perfect, and we want to bring you guys the best. We want, Absolutely. We want you guys to see our best, whether we're making mistakes, whether we're misquoting, whether I'm mispronouncing how to pronounce words, which is going to happen a lot. Yeah. Whether that's happening or not, yeah. I want the best to be seen. Yes, and and I, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll correct you whenever I can. And you will, and that's fine. You, yeah. <laughs> you know. So let's, let's talk about the show. First and foremost, this is Things We Talk About, where we talk about conversations, where we have conversations. That matter. That matter. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, so the idea is is that there's a lot of things that uh, people uh, should be talking about that aren't or um, that they think they they understand but they may not because they may not have the whole picture or or whatever. So or they, they live in like an echo chamber. Oh yeah. Of, of either side of any anything. A lot of people, especially with Facebook, a lot of social needs. They get stuck in this echo chamber and they don't really hear what actually is, or at least a different perspective of what is, rather than what them and all their friends and family think. Exactly, exactly. Ultimately, I think it's about context um, and being able to provide uh, context for larger issues or or longer issues, uh, versus you know breadth versus time or whatever, um, and uh, to basically allow us to have that conversation and then to start. Uh, conversations with our listeners, um, and we can have those. We'll have forums and, and you know whatnot. Right. By by the time this episode comes out, we'll have everything set up. And ready oh right God, now. I hope so. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> I believe it. Yes, I believe we, it. So I will. So what are we talking about today then? Uh, so today, uh, I thought we'd talk about uh, the nature of of wealth. Okay. What What is that? Uh, what even is wealth? So my question to you is, what what do you think wealth is? That's tough because if you're looking for a monetary stance, it's someone who doesn't have to struggle to make ends meet mm. is wealth. And not just struggle, but to the point where their kids may not have to struggle to make ends meet. And that to me is my perception of financial wealth. Now, yeah. that's not a priority for me. I've never cared. Clearly. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> That's not a huge thing for me. Like mm -hmm. my, I, I grew up with people who thought that was very important, and I have kind of a distaste sure. for that based sure. on how I, was, how I was brought up and what I've seen and mm -hmm. how people act based on what's important you to them. You call that being a reverse snob? Uh, yeah, I completely do because mm -hmm. like, especially when I was a teenager, I used to – like I found out one of my friends was rich. I would like, not want to talk to him anymore. What? Okay. <laughs> and like even though I came from like a decent family, I would mm -hmm. wear like the same jeans every day and like – alternate mm -hmm. between two or three oh, different yeah. white shirts blue because, collar and proud yeah even though i'm not blue collar like i'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, but, like i just i thought it's so much better to have love and to have a community and to have friendship and have like a purpose in your life versus a no, shit ton absolutely of money. no no i so totally for, agree with if you. we're talking about wealth from a perspective of what's important because you can have a wealth of love uh-huh you can have a wealth of friendship you can have a wealth of of entrepreneurship, you're going to wealth of, of good things in your life that aren't necessarily directed with money. Sure, sure. So I, I, got, a, I got a question for you. So you said uh, love and friendship and what else? It's like My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> friendship yeah. is magic, buddy. Yeah, money. yeah. So, uh, so, but what we, are more important than wealth? Like the, What's more, the, like things? the more, love, the more friendship. love, friendship, uh, responsibility. Re okay, so my question is, does being wealthy preclude that all of those things? Can I mean, you, be, if you are wealthy, then you cannot have those things. No, they're not. They're not mutually exclusive. Okay, for sure. In fact, I think it would be easier to 
have a wealth of love and have a wealth of friendship and have a wealth of, you know, giving, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. if you had more to spend on that. Certainly. So why, why, why do you like set them apart? I guess is my question. I, I don't necessarily, but I, I see what you're saying. It's, I feel the default thought when you say the word wealth mm -hmm. is financial. Yeah. And I feel like it is often, although definitely not always, there's many examples of it not being the case, but wealth mm -hmm. can also, can often be, uh, lead to people becoming more of an asshole and less of, of a good loving person. Sure, sure. And people that have money aren't always happy. They're often miserable. They have tons of money and are very unhappy. They're lonely. They don't have like fulfillment in their life. Absolutely. No, totally. Um, I think that, uh, uh, well, we're we're gonna do a whole mo a whole episode on money. That's gonna be a whole different thing. But I think that uh, you, like a lot of people, maybe most people, um, are sort of combining uh, wealth and richness. Um, those are actually two different things. Okay. Um, in fact, you, it is possible to be uh, rich but not wealthy. Um, and I guess it would be possible to be wealthy but not rich. Okay. Um, so richness is defined as your income of valuable resources. Okay. Right. So how much money do you have coming in? Right. The, or, you know what I mean? How many, how your, you know, stuff like that. Wealth is basically the accumulation of that. And so that makes sense that um, people would combine the two because usually when we think of accumula accumulation it means coming in but accumulation really means okay so you can, you can have assets and nothing coming in you'll be wealthy but not rich correct okay correct um and it's like net versus gross yeah yeah exactly exactly okay. or you know you could be have a lot of stuff coming in but have a lot of debt that you have to surface sur sure. service so you can be you have rich, rich but, not, but wealthy. not wealthy okay right very cool right and so i think that a lot of the issues uh, that people have with wealth is actually a problem with richness because uh, the things that they perceive people have to do to get that kind of money coming in. Yeah, not not to to sidebar it, but that's where I think wealth comes from. Like the idea of privilege mm -hmm. comes from wealth mm -hmm. and people having wealth. Yeah, born with a silver spoon in your mouth and whatnot. Right, and I, I think that's where a lot of the confusion gets, not necessarily between the two, but a lot of the animosity mm -hmm. is like, well, this motherfucker – didn't have to work for anything his whole life sure and he has a better life than i do and i've had you know working in the sun all day forever and ever and ever and this person who has hardly stepped outside has more money than me sure and it harbors bitterness it harbors you know there's a word for that it's called well, envy envy yeah sure <laughs> you know <laughs> absolutely so um now i don't i don't know in this in this hypothetical example you know i don't know if the 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 rich person, the wealthy person in question, he's like an asshole, okay. right? Because I don't think that the person making these accusations knows that either. Okay, well let's 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 do a hypothetical, sure. Because I agree with that, yeah. Because it's all speculation. Yeah, exactly. But let's say you've got dad owns a dealership. Uh, a fi yeah, a dealership, <laughs> and then he's got this spoiled son sure. who's twenty five, mm -hmm. smokes pot and plays video games all day, which sure. sounds awesome, mm -hmm. mind you. I mean, I wish that was my yeah. life, <laughs> but, but let's say his son's 25, like works on and off at the car dealership. It gets on payroll anyways. Yeah. Doesn't have to work. Doesn't have to yeah. worry about a thing. And meanwhile, you've got, you know, lot porters, you've got the, the mechanics who see this motherfucker come in yeah. in a nicer car than they'll ever own mm -hmm. and be given whatever he wants. Do you see why that would inspire envy? No, I totally get that. Okay. No, and I totally understand um, I think that taking, I think that those are totally justified feelings. Okay. Because certainly it's the money that allows this to be happening, the, the wealth and or richness that allows this whole situation to be happening. I just don't think that it is um, rational or fair to attach those properties to being wealthy, right? So that is in like paint all wealthy people with the same brush. I got you. You know what I mean? But yeah. I think that's what happens. Um, and, uh, that is, that's a problem. Um, yeah, sometimes we get also a, a type of person who 
comes from wealth, but is in turn not rich or wealthy, mm -hmm. but they still think and operate like the stereotypical wealthy person. Mm -hmm. My mother is an example of one of these people where she, while she never made very much money and didn't do very well, mm -hmm. uh, she came from money. Sure. And although she didn't inherit any of it and they didn't really do a whole lot for her, she's still like, she'll look down. So she won't date people unless they make a certain amount. She won't go out with people unless they make a certain amount. She won't be mm -hmm. friends with people unless they have a certain lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that sickens me. I, I get that. <laughs> no, no, I totally get that. That's, that's, that's a very, like, superficial way to approach Ex extremely, things. Extremely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, um, relatedly, uh, that that's pretty common in the U.S., um, in that, like, this idea of acting above your station I got you. Um, I've, I've heard it said that one of the biggest reasons uh, it's so hard to get the, the middle class to get behind tax reform is because the middle class in the U.S. has are, don't see themselves as middle class. What do they see themselves they as? They see themselves as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. Okay. And so the idea okay. is, is that they will fight restrictions that hit the you know the, the upper sure. class because they, they see think themselves that they're, as right upper class is one step well, away from let's, getting there. You probably know the answer to this, maybe you have it written down. What is a middle class income wise? So um I I dug for that um and I'm sure it varies I, per state as well. Yeah it varies per state, it varies per country. Okay. Um so I can tell you that in the world as of you know mid twenty thirteen, if you have four thousand dollars Four thousand dollars U.S. liquid, you are in the top fifty percent wealthy in the world. Wealthy, yeah, of wealth in the world. Well, that's the world, though. That is that including like that's including U the Uganda. US. Yeah, yes, and Uganda, <laughs> and there, you know, all all the whole thing, the whole okay, world. Okay. Okay. Um, but in order to jump to the top ten percent, you need uh, seventy five thousand, right? So okay, seventy five seventy five thousand liquid. Well, in assets. In assets. So okay. Yeah. In 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 so and by that so so when okay. we say resources, we're talking about cash, uh, assets, which is like real estate, stocks, Cars, bonds, and businesses. Investments, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then the capital produced by those assets. Okay. So dividends. Yeah. Dividends. Okay. Interest. Your, your biz. The profits from your business. Okay. Stuff like that. Um, and so that's I I think. You know, so seventy-five dollars liquid or something that could be liquid if you, you know you need it, liquid or near liquid, um, and then to get into the and that's in the world. So ten percent of the world. So seventy-five thousand dollars is a lot of money to have liquid, but it's not that much money, right? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, what? <laughs> well, no, no, because I'm, I'm again I'm a context person. I got you. So like in order to so that's ten percent, top ten okay. percent in the world. In order to hit the top one percent in the world. In mid 2013, uh, you need it. You need seven hundred and fifty three thousand dollars, ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah. Ready to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to be in the top one percent. Okay. So when I say seventy five thousand dollars is really not that much money. Comparatively. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Contextually. Exactly. Right. You know, I, I, you know, um, it was, oh, also, this, all of this, all of these dollar amounts are after debt. Okay. Um, and so, so DTI debt versus income. Yeah, debt yeah, income. exactly, okay. exactly. So, uh, it was. It has been said that a young child. It's been said that a young child um, is wealthier than twenty uh, percent of the population of the world because a young child has no debt. Okay. Right. Um, and so, anytime that you see like wealth distribution, you see like a part pie chart uh, for wealth dis distribution in the world. Um, is that including babies? Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. No, no. It, it's so it's not that it, it's it, it's including babies. It's that it also includes people with debt. So people with negative money. Right. Um, but because it's negative, it doesn't show up on the pie chart. Hmm. So you'll have a color. So if it's like they're like there's, there's like six different colors, uh, for like how you've decided to divide, you know, whatever. Right. There'll be five pieces on the pie chart, and you could be missing like twenty percent. Say that seems like there's an angle. S someone had to notice that when they were making the chart. Well, it's the nature of pie charts. 
Like it's an, like because it's not like a like a bar graph or something like that where the the bars can go beneath the line and you can actually or like a or whatever pie charts are here's a hundred percent of the pie, and but this pie slice is negative, so we can't we can't show it to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that it couldn't be used for you know the dark side. Sure. But it definitely you know it's just something to keep all in statistics, mind. All statistics can be manipulated. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Further so bias. yeah. So it's it, but it, it it is either way it is easier to to not notice it to not see that there's a problem if twenty percent of your pie is not there right right it's but, pretty shitty yeah 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 right can you imagine that like at Christmas or Thanksgiving and you can blatantly tell that twenty percent of the pie is missing yeah like what which one of you damn motherfuckers well, the, did that well the thing is is that <laughs> you you would be you would be seeing I'm gonna blow your mind you would be seeing which you believed was 100% of the pie. So I didn't know 20% was missing. But uh, yeah, unbeknownst to you, okay. 20 there was another it's like, like fifth of a pie. Okay, it's like someone lifted it up and shaved off the bottom. Or well it's like no, it's like there was another whole pie, right? There was another 20% of a whole pie, another fifth of a whole pie. A personal pan that pie. That was gone before yeah. you ever got there. Gotcha. Right? Um and you you don't know. Unless someone told you oh, like by the way, there's actually negative pi involved in this. Right. You would you'd never know. So that's the thing. Cool. Charts. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, do you know why money was invented in the first place? You talking about like the dollar currency? No, I'm talking about like like ancient Greece. Why why was money invented in the first place? Cuz it wasn't invention. My right? my cuz it used to be the 100% barter. Yeah. I got two cows. Yeah. And a daughter for a sack of wheat. Exactly. exactly. It's probably not a fair or, trade, but yeah, your daughter's yeah. like negative. If it's twenty percent negative, yeah, <laughs> your daughter is. Or you know, I, I mean, I, I hopefully she's a not. liability. Hopefully not. You know, well, you know, if you're talking about back then, that's the survival of your clan. So, if anything, the cows are negative, right? Yeah, but you can eat cows. You can't eat your daughter. No, but your daughter can bear children and whatnot. And yeah, the but then that's going. like another ten years of a liability. It's like a huge investment having a kid. I mean, how old is your daughter at the time? She well, like two she just started to bleed. I don't know. Yeah, then she's a woman. Then she's so a woman. So then you marry her off, and you have no more. It's exactly. I'll trade invest. you. I'll trade you this broad for, for a sack of wheat. No, you and whatever. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, no. So the idea, what it what it allowed for was a universal comparison. So that if I had five chickens and you had two cows, we wouldn't sit here arguing back and forth about. Well, are five, is five chickens worth two cows? Because I'm trying to figure that out right now, and I have no idea. Well, yeah, because it's impossible. This is all qualitative, right? Because um, chickens produce eggs, but cows produce milk. And how do you? And then how do you compare like the put the future eggs that you will get versus the future milk that you will get, um, and you know, and stuff like that? It's just it's just crazy. Uh, and so money allows we can agree that to a cow, you regard you know you know regardless. Regardless of anything, um, a cow is worth three gold pieces. Okay. Right? And a chicken is worth half a gold piece. Half. Ooh. You know, or something. Okay. You know, one, one gold piece. So a chicken. Sure. So in doing this, we have decided that a chicken is worth one third of a cow. Yes. And so we have this universal system of reference. We've sort of, lo we sort of lost that. <laughs> now money has become its own, you know. It's its, it's, its, its own, own thing, thing. Right. It's no longer how like much is actually worth. It's how yeah, much yeah. money someone could make off of me from buying this. Yeah. Um, like a set, a piece of gum or like a a pack of gum from the store costs like three bucks, mm -hmm. but how much actually is right a pack of gum? Right, right. So the the idea is is that it, it was originally designed as a uh, a instrument of universal measurement, um, whereas um, now it's it's like Taking it on, so if you have more money, you know, you're you you are better. You are seen as better. Um, but that's that's always. I feel like that's always been the case, even since before ancient Greece. Like kings were treated better. Well, what kings had, kings had the ability to, the the means to act on a larger scale, right? Because the kings were wealthy. They were wealthy and they were rich. Um, and they collected taxes, but they collected taxes because they kept the barbarians at the gate. You know, gates. So my, those are my people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, they were able to operate on a much larger scale. 
um, which is what wealth allows you to do. Okay. Um, so I thought a lot of the power came from just having like sleeping on a pile of money. Well, how, where do you think they got the money from? Just taking being, it, from, being kings. taking it from bitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, mine. It's mine. I'm the king. <laughs> so interestingly, do you do you know uh, what the wealthiest nation in the world is per capita? I don't know. Oh, you're not even a guess of the U.S. I was gonna get, no, I wouldn't guess the U.S. because mm-hmm. you wouldn't say it with such a smug look on your face if it was the U.S. Was yeah. it like Sweden or something like that? No, it's uh, Qatar. The fuck is that? Qatar. What, what is that? Qatar, uh, spelled Q A T A R. I thought it was Qatar. No, it's Qatar. I always called it Qatar. It's Qatar. Are you sure? I promise. Have you, you met anybody from Qatar and they told you it was? Qatar? I I have not, but I I have I have uh, been with people who who know. Okay, Trust so a yeah, of, so he said, she said. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's. In the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. I, I know where it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. I know the country. It's not, there's not Q-U, it's Q-A-T-A-R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know the country. Yeah, yeah. I so, was called in Qatar. Yeah. It Damn is, it. <laughs> that, that's what bothers me the most about this, honestly, is the pronunciation of the word. I'm sure you're right. It's just... Well, yeah, because it's, it's, it's a, like a romanization of an Arabic word. So, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and th- there's a lot of that going on when we try and use... Uh, English and other countries. For like Chinese. Yeah. Or anything, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Non, Non-Latin dialect. Yes. Um, Non-phonetic alphabet. Yes. Yeah. So Qatar has, is the wealthiest country. Yes, yeah, the wealthiest country. Wealth is also defined as your economic resiliency. So if your factory burned down, your, ba- your factory was like your major source of your richness, and your factory burns down. How able are you to bounce re- back? Yeah, bounce back. Okay, that that's another major um, aspect of, of wealthy wealthiness. Okay. Yeah, you know, if a tornado comes through and you know blows your house down, right? Or we all get laid off. Or we all get laid off. Right. Yeah. Um, it's also <laughs> it's also relative uh, to where you live. Okay. For example, um, if you were to live in Brazil. Uh, but you were still making money in U.S. dollars. Uh, you you would you would be far wealthier and far richer. Right, right. That's you, why that's why a lot of people get jobs in the U.S. and then send money back home. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Because their family will live like kings. Exactly. I had a, a client when I when I worked for one of the major banks. I I met him and he was this guy from. East Africa, I forget the name of the country, hmm. an East African country, and his English was great because they, they learned English there as, as a kid, but he worked in the United States for six months a year, making $10 an hour, and he just saved all of his money, and he said he's, he's like 35 years old, he said he's been doing this since he was 20, hmm. and so he would work here for just above minimum wage, mm-hmm. and save his money, fly back to Africa, he says he lives like a king, oh. he has servants, he has like a mansion, yeah, yeah. this huge lot of property on what equates to $10 an hour USD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and there, are, there are a lot of people who um, manage to work remotely and they'll do, so they'll have like an office job, um, but they'll work remotely and then, so they're able to go to like Germany or Thailand or something like right. that and still be putting in, you know, their quote it, unquote 40 hours a week. It would definitely... <laughs> So that's another conversation. Yeah. But, but uh, so I could live in a socialist country where healthcare is free and I could get paid in USD yeah. by working remotely, get the yeah. benefit of the lesser tax that the United States has, mm-hmm. but get the healthcare and the, the social. If you were a citizen, yeah. Of, of Germany or like Sweden or a country mm-hmm. like that. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely good. And the same is true. You could, um, if you had a job in. England in the UK, um, and you could work in the US if you worked remotely. And the the pound sterling is stronger than it's like a buck fifty right um, to a dollar. So um, you would be able to do the same thing in the US. So work in the US, but work remotely. Yeah, your job is in the UK. Okay. Yeah, or or you know you uh, work at the uh, the euro. So e- even though the exchange rate dropped during the brexit correct correct but Which, well, i'm sure we'll come across yeah it didn't time. but we didn't equal out or anything no 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 no, no. The, the pound sterling fell to i think 1988 levels and okay. it was still higher than 34 right 
Right. That was at Canada levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, the, so I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to use this formula if you're in a Eurozone country uh, because the Euro is stronger than the U.S. dollar. Right, of course. So, so and it, it always will be. So it would backfire. Right. Basically, if you, if you had a job in the U.S. and were trying to work remotely, right. you know, in, that would not work. Well. No, not, not <laughs> in a country that, that's yeah. part of the European Union. But if you mm-hmm. lived in, in Canada or Australia or Japan or things like that, you'd be, you'd be a good plan. Um, so what, do, what would you consider um, the markers of um, being wealthy? Like... Um, like, what do people who are wealthy usually have? No, we're going to t- to lock this into United States. Sure. Okay, because that, that would be different. Yes, generally. Because I, I would almost be wealthy if... <laughs> it's true. If, if we're talking about worldwide. But United States only, uh, I would say high-end car, very large home, able to go gambling and just throw a bunch of money at so, it. Yeah, yeah, so so to have so expendable um, money. Exactly. Have expend to to have a lot of valuable things. Sure. Right. Um so what do you think um signifies like what makes something valuable? What makes something valuable? Like what is value? That is that's a good question because what was value is not value anymore. What was value is how much literally is this worth? Like you said, what does the, that even mean? The one cow to three chickens. Okay. Bringing that back. So like, so relative to everything else. Correct. And even that wasn't that wasn't universal. That was just what you and I had in our conversation at this uh, moment okay. decided. Okay. See, I thought was that was like it. a universal. Yeah. So if no, no, if we came back to the next week or the next day, could change. We'd have to barter all over again. Damn it. Well, I, I kind of like doing that, to be honest. Yeah. Negotiating's sure. fun. Well, it did work for, for a great many years. For the majority of mankind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, money, um, we, we, bartered for, we have bartered for longer than we had actual currency. Correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which would make it the majority. Yes, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. I, I, I had to do that. Um, I guess, what is value? What was value, I would assume... Is how much something actually, the cost to make, the cost of man hours put into it, the cost of distribution, mm-hmm. plus the profit of the seller. Sure, that um, is market price. MSRP. Yeah, MS- yeah. yeah. Well, MSRP is market marketing suggested retail price. Uh, MSRP. Yeah, yeah. Manufacturers. Is it? Oh, you're right. You're right. Manufacturer suggested right, retail so price. So manufacturer suggested re- retail price has nothing to do. It's what the manufacturer needs you to sell it at so you don't screw up the market for them. Okay. Originally, if we're talking about in ye old times. Um, <laughs> Are we talking ye old times as in like ancient Greece with... No, no. That, that ye we're old talking about like the Hobbit with dragons. Knights and, and okay. knight, you know, swords and sorcery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so originally it had to do with scarcity. Okay. Um, for example, uh, Napoleon, which is not swords and sorcery, but although there was both Ish. swords and, and people who called themselves sorcerers. Right. So uh, it applies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Napoleon hosted, I believe, the King of Siam at one point. And uh, Napoleon, uh, so there's this thing called the, uh, it's where you kept the salt. I forget what it a is. A shaker. No, no, no. It, it's, uh, it has a specific name. Container um, box. No, <laughs> salt cellar. Salt cellar. Called the salt cellar. So that's not somebody who sells the salt. No, it's, I think it's with a C. Cellar like. Cellar like a like, basement. Like a basement. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's like a root cellar where you keep roots. Um, so anyway, so salt cellar. It's like a it's like a dish or whatever, and it's where you keep the salt and pepper. And at the time, salt was actually extremely valuable uh, because it was used in everything. Yeah, it preservatives. Was used in it preservation. Was, right. It was used in the making of leather. Um, it was, it was, it was French it, fries. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> not quite, not, not just yet. Um, but it was used in everything and it was considered something of a luxury to have, just have it on the table, just use it for your meals. Right. Um, and so you could tell who, like, who's the most important and we say like the head of the table or something like okay. that, because you basically the salt seller with the salt side of the things would be pointing towards 
like the host or or the guest depending on like who you were trying to um honor gotcha um so napoleon ate with gilded utensils which is to say they were they were uh gold uh not plated because they didn't have electroplating at the time but so, so gilded was gold yeah well they, they didn't were, mean they it were was like going on raids gold, but they were okay. yeah, yeah but they were <laughs> so uh so he was eating with essentially utensils of gold okay um and just throw something out there what do you think the king of siam who was the guest of honor was eating with hmm if if napoleon was eating with gilded and yeah. he was the host yeah etiquette says he would eat with something better than gold mm -hmm. which at the time diamond no 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 that'd be really impressive uh aluminum Aluminum, because aluminum was rare back then. Aluminum was, it wasn't necessarily rare, but it was exceedingly difficult to process. Okay. And so uh, you could have bauxite gotcha. and okay. stuff like that, but to actually turn it into metal and use it for anything. So, side note, biblically there's a thing in somewhere in that thing that says salt and light, God is the salt and the light of the earth. Okay. Is that in reference to back when salt was? Probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good clarification. I can't. I, I don't know that for sure. But yeah, that but that sense. that would make that. Yeah. I just kind of clicked in my head. Secondly, and I have to remember what I was trying to say because I got really Aluminum. excited. Aluminum. Like, Aluminum. <laughs> cool, but I, I didn't know that. But that was so yeah. So the so the idea is that you know value changes is where I'm going. Yeah, with that. I was so gonna nowadays, I was gonna ask you. Nowadays we yeah. we wrap leftovers that may or may not get eaten and then you know with aluminum foil i still have stuff in there from thanksgiving it. exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly and now it's nothing you know we we see aluminum as this thing that's uh just throw away you know it's mm -hmm. just right it's 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 good it's good aluminum's yeah. good for two things chewing on when you have fillings <laughs> and it's good for microwaving right uh no 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 actually those are both very bad things to do okay. Um, they were, I'm here to learn, so teach yeah, me. yeah, yeah. They were both they were both cause rather unpleasant side effects. <laughs> so aluminum is like this this like almost worthless material we have now. It's very like well, it's, it's used in in airplanes. Like it still it still has value. But supply and demand creates value. Exactly, exactly. It's saying. so easy for us to process now um, that it, it's certainly not more valuable than so gold. It, and it's platinum. a combination of the, of the difficulty to attain. Plus the yeah. scarcity, and so the reason why it was so valuable is because the uh, where, where, reason why it was such a big deal for the king of Siam to be eating with aluminum utensils was because to have enough aluminum metal to to make utensils was insane. Mm -hmm. It was opulence beyond imagining. Uh, What's the word? Opulence. I've never heard that. Opulence is like. Uh, you know, you walk into the main dining room at the Titanic, and you've got crystal chandeliers and like gilded features. Some dumb on the broad walls. dance on the table. That's below deck. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's just like um, overt and showy uh, displays of wealth. Okay. It's opulence. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Word of the day. Word of, your word of the day. You heard it here first. Is opulence. Um, so. Uh, and it, the funny thing is, is that it's not, you know, aluminum is not the only example of this. Um, but the value can, of stuff can also be preserved artificially, believe it or not. Um, so uh, diamonds are also really easy to get out of the earth. Well, can I stop you right there? Yeah. I want to talk to you about something having to do with wealth. Okay. If you have extra money, you should check out our Patreon page. <laughs> Hey Lazarus. Uh, hey Randy. Is everything done with our Patreon page? Uh, yeah, I finished it this morning. Great, take it away, Mr. Announcer Guy. Wait, what? Do you like the things we talk about? Do you crave Lazarus's witty insights and Randy's dulcet tones? Did you know that TWTA produces additional content besides the weekly episodes, like bonus content, update letters, and personal thank you notes? Did you know you could get these benefits and more by becoming a Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash TWTA? Lazarus made sure to find a process simple enough for Randy to use. Hey. So we know you can too. Fans pledge one, three, five, or more dollars a month. The amount you choose will determine your Patreon tier, which will determine what sweet tier exclusive benefits you'll receive. 
Together, these patron pledges not only allow you, the fans, to increase your participation, but also give Lazarus and Randy increased ability to create more and better content. Each goal achieved will unlock things like new kinds of content, one-time host challenges, additional weekly updates, and one step closer to having conversations that matter full time. TWTA's Patreon page also features an all-post feed, where you, the fans, can get in on the conversations, post fan art, get to know the community, and leave comments for your intrepid host. Starting the process is as simple as going to patreon.com forward slash TWTA and clicking the Become a Patreon button. Diamonds. Diamonds. So yeah, so now diamonds are actually, so back in the day, diamonds were really hard to get out of um, the ground and they were hard to process because, you know, because Leonardo DiCaprio hard as, had to save some hard black as dude. diamonds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, blood diamonds. Yeah. Um, and so that we're, we'll get there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, but now they're relatively easy because we have modern mining um, technology and we know like where to find them. And, you know, globalization has allowed uh, companies to be like, oh, we'll just go over there and get them. We don't have to worry about it taking, you know, months at a time to get here. And hopefully it doesn't get pillaged by pirates. Right. Um, not that pirates still aren't a thing. Um, they totally are. Don't, don't look at me when you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. In fact, uh, one company controls pretty much all the all diamond production. Right. Right now. Um, and, that's and who was that? The De Beers Corporation. <clears throat> okay. Are you are you talking about like a Zionist now, like the conspiracy theory that Jews, no, 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 Jews like, run the world? No, no, no. Like legit, like okay. The Thank you. The De Beers company. <laughs> I was gonna um, slap you if you said otherwise. <laughs> no, 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 no. The no, the De Beers company legit does. Um, well, legit is probably illegit. Does. Yeah, um, like they they have all the paperwork, I guess. Okay, well, that's um, all. That's all you need to make it legit is paperwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, more than anyone else, the the De Beers Corporation understands uh, that scarcity produces value. Right. Um, and so they create an artificial scarcity. They do. Yeah. They do, uh, actually, yeah. So they have vaults and vaults and vaults and vaults and vaults of vaults of diamonds um, that they just sort of like slowly let back into the market. Um, so if if all of the diamonds that they they are keeping locked up were to be released, diamonds would would be worthless. Well, they wouldn't necessarily. The application of diamonds wouldn't be worthless. Um, well, we, be, they'd be not, worth whatever people are willing to pay for them. Yeah, but I'm I'm talking it for a scientific purpose because I know dentists still use diamond tips. Oh yeah, you diamond drills and stuff right. like that. It just that. would be as but cheap as aluminum. But that's not jewelry grade diamonds. Right. That's like diamond dust that is left over from, um, you know, like making jewelry and and or okay. like stuff that you couldn't sell as jewelry stuff like that. Um, the worst thing about diamonds is that they gave us two Rihanna songs. <sighs> That's not fair. No, it's, you're right. It's not fair for those of us that have to, <laughs> have to listen to them every time you ride in the car with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the, the biggest example of diamonds in, in our society? Like big, where, where do diamonds come in the most? Of course you're talking about romance. Yeah. Whether it's be on a necklace yeah. and you're trying to make up for the fact that you cheated on your wife or you buy her a ring because she says that she really wants one. Yeah, yeah. Because it's 100% a woman thing. Okay, um, and so, uh, so yeah, so it's like the engagement ring, like that—that's the key point. Yeah, it's retarded. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> we sh we should probably avoid the use of that word. Okay. Uh, but uh, so the idea is that, well, in point of fact, uh, did you know that the De Beers Corporation started that? The whole diamond thing? The use of the, not the use of the word retarded. No, no, no. Okay. The, the, the diamond ring engagement. Diamond engagement uh, ring. It was, what, the early 1900s? 1938. Yeah. So not even really early. So it's yeah, early -ish. Almost mid. Early right. to mid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that. But <laughs> I can guarantee you most people do not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so... They wanted to sell them. And it said, how about... you? They released, released like an advertisement or something that said... It was, it was an advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's it is like the most successful advertising campaign in human history. Right. Um, now that wouldn't work today if you had a social media account because people would do the research and find out it's worth nothing and then chase you out of town. You think? I mean, come on, come on. No, they're, they're, we we pay tons of money for stuff. You think an iPhone is actually worth five hundred dollars? Uh, iPhones are worth nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hate Apple so much. Um, we need to do an episode. On? Think, uh, or no, how about uh, glasses? Glasses, for example, like you go, you go and you pay, you pay two to four hundred dollars for a pair of glasses. I tell you what, man, I have a pair of glasses because I can't see where shit. Mm-hmm. And have you ever seen me wear my glasses? I have not. No, because that in and of itself makes me so mad. I won't upgrade my pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, like, let's let's not pretend like it doesn't happen. Anymore. It doesn't happen. Right. Of course, it happens. Um, it's just just like you know, if no one questions it, then right. But I tell you what's questioned all the time is car sales. Car sales. Car sales because because I did car sales for uh, about a year. Uh huh. And people know for a fact the MSRP is inflated. Yeah. And so people come in asking for the invoice and say, I will only pay this price. That's what they do. And so car salesmen, where they used to make hundreds of thousands a year, are now making thirty to 40000 Okay. Because everyone comes in, there's no more profit on the vehicles, and they come in and say, I want it at this price. Okay. So... That's what I was referencing. How do we feel about that? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck the auto industry. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. All right, because I don't know. Cause we, we just went over this whole thing about like wealth and people making lots of money and stuff like that. So. No, it's it's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. If, if people are still going to work the job because it's you know it's fun and exciting and it's fun to barter and negotiate and mm-hmm. I enjoyed it when I did that part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's still a lot of money on used cars mm-hmm. because you can buy a car back at like five hundred and then fix it up and sell it for five grand. Sure. And sure. And then you still make a percentage of the gross profit of the the used vehicle. Right. And that's where the money is. As far as new cars, you're losing money. Okay. Money's made on used cars. Hmm. Yeah, there's also, I think, the, I imagine the service contracts and stuff like that make money. Yeah, and you would, for the dealership I worked at, I made 50 bucks for every post sale that was made. So if I sold them some sort of, like, paint protection, some sort of, you know, theft protection, some mm-hmm, sort of mm-hmm. gap insurance, yeah, 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 yeah. et cetera, et cetera. I got paid a flat 50 per one. But the oh. finance manager, who was the one who you know, worked at the financing of the car, mm-hmm. made a percentage of the profit of how much was actually in it. There's a ton of profit. Oh, wow. Because yeah. the, the, identi- the identity theft in particular charged us, I think, like 50 bucks, and we charged customers 300. Oh, wow. wow. And then they would just keep, I think it's 50% of the profit of that. So they'd make hundreds of dollars each yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, service plans are... <clears throat> Are in, in anything, right? Are real money makers. Even insurance, which we'll do an episode on insurance sometime. Oh yeah, but insurance yeah. is another one like that. Because if you think about how much money you actually spend versus how much money you spend in insurance, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's nowhere. It's nowhere near the same. Uh, yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's the end of what I've got written down. Well, I'll tell you a story. Oh, so. I was 22 years old, Mm -hmm. uh, got my teenage girlfriend pregnant. Um, Good job. Yeah, thank you, thank you. If we had a round of applause (laughs) sound effect, I'd play that right now. Uh, And she wanted to get married, and I said, fuck it, why not? Like you do. Yeah, that's pretty much... (laughs) To be fair, to be fair, you said she was your teenage girlfriend. How old was she? Uh, She was 18. Okay. Yeah. And she she got pregnant, and we decided uh, to get married. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, whatever, sure, why not, we're having a kid, might as well, mm-hmm. more or less. And so I told my mom I'd plan on getting married, and my plan was to not get a wedding ring. <laughs> not get an engagement ring, mm-hmm. just get these shitty tattoos on her fingers for like 100 bucks. Because I was making nothing an hour, I think yeah. I was making like 14 an hour repairing cell phones at the time. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't working, because she was in high school, so mm-hmm. <laughs> or just getting out of high school or something. So it was... So like, okay, well, let's, let's do this. And so I told my mom, and of course she was mad. But then she, a little bit later, comes to me and says, well, I have this for you. She opens it up, and it's a diamond ring. Hmm. And it turns out that was like her grandmother's wedding ring. Yeah. Like her what, grandmother's engagement ring. Yeah. And my first reaction was to say, I don't want this. Mm-hmm. I want to do this myself. But then I kind of thought, like, this would make my wife extremely happy. Right. Versus the tattoo idea that I mentioned to her and she rolled her eyes. Mm. No, yeah, no. So, so which, the gift is not necessarily the ring, but it's the sentimentality and, like, the, the history that you're giving her. Right. She could have gotten me a brand new ring. I don't give a shit. Right. It, it was just the right. idea of making my right. wife happy. Right. But if, but if she had given you, you know, uh, a pocket watch that belonged to her great-grandfather... 
that would have probably Honestly, meant a bit more. No, I would. What I if she gave me a pocket watch that belonged to a great. First of all, pocket watches are ridiculous to have these day and age. Like I'm not I'm not a steampunk person, so I have no reason <laughs> for a pocket watch. Other than they're awesome. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, I there's no practical for me. There's no practical use of a pocket watch. So what mm-hmm. I would do if I was given a pocket watch is store it somewhere mm-hmm. until she forgets about it and then sell it. Oh, wow. And then use that money to go on vacation or something mm-hmm. or like to pay off some of the debt or to do something practical because there's mm-hmm. no practical use for a pocket watch. You and don't it, think that she'd be upset if she found out? Honestly, <laughs> I might be able to talk my way out of it. She might be upset, but it's like, don't you remember how good of a time we had on that vacation that you really wanted to go on that we couldn't afford until we got all that money all or of a sudden? What if that taints her memories of that vacation? Like, It's, it's risk to me. The decisions we make in life are risk versus potential reward. Sure. The potential reward of having something applicable, something that matters, something that will be awesome versus a fucking pocket watch that I'm not going to carry on my person. You're not a very sentimental person. I'm really not, I'm man. Dude, I'll tell you what. Away from this. The day I moved out of my house, I threw away all my trophies. I threw away all the stuff I had when I was a kid. I just threw it in the trash. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm never doing this again. This Christmas, <laughs> my mom busted out the yearbooks, like my middle school, elementary school, mm-hmm. high school yearbook. Told her to throw it away. I looked through them. was like, huh, I remember that. It's like a picture of me in my underwear. Yeah. In one of the photos. And it's like, it's, fun. it's a funny memory. But I already have the memory. I don't need to look at these pictures of forever ago. Mm-hmm. So I told mom to throw it out. Sure. Like, I, sen- I'm sentimental in a sense that I get nostalgic often. Mm-hmm. And I try to stay away from that because it makes me sad. Because you drink so often. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's part of it. But like a lot, a lot of video games have nostalgic memories because I grew up playing games with my brother and our neighbors and stuff. Uh-huh. And there's certain games I won't play unless my brother or my friends are around because the nostalgia is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But as far as like actual objects, I don't, I don't get it. I can't get my head around it. It's cool that some people are like that. It's not for me. Well, I think that I think that there's so there's so there's a difference between like sentimentality, uh, nostalgia, and um, like I I don't know the word for it, but it's almost like toxic nostalgia, where it's just like you're holding on to stuff to to like almost like fill holes in your life. Okay, because when I think of toxic nostalgia, I think of people who remember things way more fondly than they were. Sure. The Ronald Reagan the syndrome. The good old days. The good old days. The member berries. Yeah, member <laughs> And then there's the, like you said, the people who use nostalgia to make themselves happy. Right. When they're really just sad. So right. they think back, I remember when I was a kid and we did X, Y, and Z, and they just look in, like, I picture someone looking in the air. Yeah, yeah, Smiling. Yeah. And meanwhile, their life has fallen apart. Yeah, because yeah. Because they're miserable. Yeah. And that, and that's more and so, so, yeah, and I, I think that's, 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 you don't get that being a reflexive thing. Um, and that's totally fair, because it also should not be. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I think that it, it, it does make sense for people to hold on to things that remind them of, of times gone by. Um, but some people just don't need that. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what gets me, though is pictures i like pictures not necessarily like because i have a family you know photographs photographs of you know my my daughter of my family that i have is heartwarming like yeah i have a giant picture of my daughter when she was two on the wall and it's the cutest thing in the world and i look at that all the time and i get very happy so i understand that photographs because photographs for me are directly linked to a memory Mm -hmm. as are certain video games sure but as far as Items, particularly expensive items, because if it were expensive, to me, the practicality of what I could sell that for will always outwin the sentiment. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because if I had something cheap and stupid that was a funny memory, Mm -hmm. I'd keep it. Yeah. But if it were, like, something I could sell Mm -hmm. and then have a more applicable use to further my relationship with my wife or my family, I would do that every time. Do you think that you'd still do that if you were wealthy? Ooh, that is an awesome question. If I had expen- expendable money, because mm-hmm. I do a little bit you, now. If but you like, were economically resilient. To where nothing could shake, shake my foundations. I'd keep it. Mm-hmm. I would keep the pocket watch. I would keep 
the stupid yearbook. Mm -hmm. I would keep the trophies because I would probably have a room to store that shit in and go in there and get high and feel (laughs) like super touchy feely for like three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then go back to life. Yeah. So the thing is, though, um, if you if you get there, right, right, if you get there, you've already thrown your yearbooks away. Yeah, but I'm I'm not going to regret that. Because okay. I understand where I was at at the time. Because let's say this podcast takes off. You and I are internet celebrities. Let's say when when, when that happens and we have expendable money, I'm going to look back and say, I still made the right call. Sure. And that's good. That's, that's an excellent trait to have. Logic? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, to stick to your guns, I think. I think. Yeah. Um, the downside of sticking to your guns is it causes you to double down when you're wrong. Yeah. Now, I don't necessarily do that. Um, Never. <laughs> honestly, probably not. Mm-hmm. And you've corrected me on a hundred times. I'm, I've barely ever have argued with mm-hmm. you, um, unless it's a matter of opinion, and then then we can argue. But if it's something I that's need to like start taking notes, <laughs> we can have a recording yeah, yeah. of this. So yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to just listen to the episodes. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can we can have we can have like <laughs> corrections. You can be the, the, the so here's where Randy was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you asshole. <laughs> uh, so as long as know. it's objective, here's where do we it all were wrong. It's just. It'll probably mostly be Randy. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, there's going to be lots of things I'm going to say that will be factually incorrect. Yeah. And it's a conversation. This is, I mean, there's notes. There's things that we've brought back and forth. We talked about some stuff in advance. But for the most part, this is a genuine conversation that we're having. Absolutely. And in genuine conversation, it's impossible to remember, for me, to remember an exact year, an exact date, an exact time, how to pronounce Qatar. These are Other. things that, like, if I did my research in advance and we scripted all of this, that mm-hmm. I would figure out. But to me, a more sincere dialogue is more important than me getting it 100% right all the time. No, I, to- I, to- I totally agree with you. I'd rather be sincere and wrong than disingenuous and correct. You know, I don't have a problem with you getting things wrong. I have a problem with you doubling down on things when you're wrong about them. <laughs> yeah, I think the only time that's ever going to happen is a conflict of opinion. Mmm... Okay. Because there's... That's a whole other episode. Objectivity versus subjectivity. And if it's subjective, because this is what you feel, Mm -hmm. and this is what you want and what you like, Mm -hmm. and if it conflicts with me, I'll argue with you. Mm -hmm. But if it's objective, if this is a fact, Mm -hmm. if this is a fact, if this is a fact, and you're making sense, fuck it. I'm wrong. (laughs) 100% of the time, 100% apologies, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Now take that out of context and just have a soundboard where you play that all the time. <laughs> Whenever I go to say Don't, something. Hey man, like if I have a soundboard, you're going to be the one assembling it. So <laughs> Probably. You'll have, no, you have nothing, yeah, no ground to complain. Um, you built this for me. Yeah, Aww. for us. <laughs> for us. This is, our, this is our thing. We're partners. We're friends. Yeah. We're doing this right. Yeah, absolutely. Now before we, before we call it quits, let, let me ask you a question. The company whom owns most of the the diamond vaults. De Beers. Yes, De Beers. You've seen their commercials with the silhouettes. And... I don't watch TV. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't want to fucking box, dude. <laughs> like, I got, I'm working on that thanks to you. I'm working on getting that in my box, but okay. I, don't, I don't watch television. Okay. So, the De Beers, mm-hmm. they are holding on to the diamonds knowing that they're harming Oh, yeah. People? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. They can't not know. So how could someone to you, and the ethics is another conversation for another time, Mm -hmm. but how could someone who works for that company do that and be okay with it? Oh, well... Do they they not know? No, they, well, I mean, it's possible they don't, like, they, what does they mean? Do you mean, like, the, 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 like, sandwich cart guy? I'm talking about, like, like the dude with the gun at the door. With a scowl on his face for 14-hour shifts. Oh, you like the security guard at the Deers Corporation. That's the word Corporation. for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think that they, generally the idea would be, was, would be that they are supporting or, like, they're, they're just getting a paycheck. Like, and if they, if they didn't do it, then someone else would. The, the um, Nuremberg defense almost. They're yeah. just doing what they're told. Oh, yeah, also that. Yeah. I, I, had a, I had a roommate who sold cocaine. Oh, okay. Um, he sold cocaine before he moved in. He moved in, tried to get his life together, couldn't get his life together, and we'll talk in detail about him another time. Um, I still talk to him. He's still a friend. But he couldn't shake 
that lifestyle of of, of selling dope because it's quick cash. Sure. Quick cash. Oh and yeah. You, and then you so, move it, it, and then, you, then selling selling drugs is a high unto itself. Yeah, it's great. Selling any, honestly, selling anything is <laughs> like it's it is it is a rush. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very exciting. So he. I talked to him about it one time, and I was a little less open-minded when I was in my very early 20s than I am now. Mm. Uh, and I talked to him. I said, how can you justify doing this, mm-hmm. like how, how, knowing that you're hurting people? Mm-hmm. And his response was, if I don't do it, somebody else will. Yeah. And I'm a good person, so I might as well be. And he was. He's mm-hmm. decent. Rel- mostly a decent guy. He was not a monster. He was not a monster. <laughs> Definitely yeah. selfish in a lot of ways. I don't know if he gets credit for not being a monster. Well, but... may, maybe. For people who sell dope. I mean, yeah, maybe yeah. contextually that... I haven't known too many of them, so I don't have a... I've known a few, and a lot size. of them really, really suck. Okay. So so this guy, he even his mom was like addicted to the stuff, and he wouldn't sell it to his mom, but like he would sell it to people who probably did. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, how, how are you okay with this? And his, his excuse was always, his reason was always, if I don't do it, Somebody else will, and I'm not a monster, basically. Oh, okay. And I said, well, I mean, I, that kind of makes sense mm-hmm. if you're not, like, super principled against the stuff. Mm-hmm. That, a lot that of arms sense. dealers have the same, same opinion. Yeah, I might as well be the one making money. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, you know me. I'm not a very principled person. I'll go back on my word all the time. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But I would have a hard time doing that. If what I'm doing is directly hurting somebody else in, in a way to where – it's ruining lives. Mm-hmm. Like it's one thing if I say something that hurts somebody's feelings, but if I'm actually ruining somebody's life, mm-hmm. how could I contribute? Well, I think the argument is is that you're not you're not ruining their lives, right? You're just selling them drugs. What they do with the drugs afterwards is how, on them. How, how very libertarian of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and don't get me wrong. Like I, I am all for decriminalization of you know various. Drugs. Well, 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 again, that's that's an episode. Yeah, for but that time. you know, that's right. that's a whole other episode. But I think again, that is, um, it's like, uh, yes, I am fac- I am technically facilitating the events that allow those events to occur. Right. But that is not the same. I guess it's like driving your car, someone jaywalks, and you hit them by accident. It's their fault they were jaywalking. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault. Mm-hmm. And you can justify it by saying, all I was doing was driving yeah, so, my car. So it, the, what you're talking about, I think, is um, intent versus negligence. Right? And so if you were driving your car, but you, um, you didn't see them or something like that, um, you did not intend to hit them. Right? Not your fault. Right? But if you were texting at the time and you didn't see them because you were texting or something. Yeah. Texting is my problem when I drive. <laughs> that's, that. <laughs> that, you know, that's, that's negligence and then you are at fault. Okay. And so I think what you're sort of arguing is that someone who sells dope and they know that, this part, that the dope is like ruining like their lives or whatever, something right. like that, that, that in selling them dope, they are negligent. Um, you know, they, they are not intending, and their, their counter-argument to you is, I am not intending to ruin their lives. I just happen to be present in the chain of events that ruins their life. In the same way that you just happen to be driving the car that hit the person, you know, you aren't, you aren't killing them, but now, you are present. That's a fact, and I agree. How do you feel about it? Um, I... It's not, it's, not, it's not even a would you do it, because you wouldn't, and I wouldn't either. Yeah. But would you hold it against somebody that did? I think, yeah, I think it's, it's sort of a cop-out defense um, in that, like, uh, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's just saying, like, it's, it's the, it sort of, like, absolves you of any wrongdoing, and that sort of idea can be used for anything. Anything. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just, you just, it's um, incredibly Teflon. Harmful. It makes you Teflon to whatever happens while you're... Um, you know, while you're, while you're drug- slinging drugs. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're completely void of all responsibility and mm-hmm. any wrongdoing. Because I, I had a hand in it, but it wasn't really my thing. It wasn't my intention. But yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what's going on. You know. Um, so, question. Yeah. Um, a bartender yeah. serves a regular over time. The regular is an alcoholic. Their life's going down the drain. 
Um, and eventually they drive drunk and get hit, and, you know, and hit, um, hit someone, right? Okay. Person dies or no? Uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the point is, is that it was a downward spiral that occurred over a length of time. Okay. It was, it was noticeable. Um, how does the bartender justify that? Just serving drinks, dude. Is that different than slinging dope? No. No, it's not. Only because dope is illegal. If dope were illegal, or were if dope, dope were legalized, basically, yeah. to sell crack cocaine, yeah. then it would be the same. But giving someone drinks is not illegal. Right. Which is kind of stupid that one is and one is not. So why do you qualify as ruining their life, then? The legal consequences or the social consequences? What, Both I, is acceptable. I don't care, personally. Well, but. no, but like you're saying that like, <laughs> you, the dope that you are selling this person is ruining their life. Potentially. Right, yeah. right. So it how do like you... Potentially, this person... I don't know. I've never been a bartender. I've never come across that before. But I feel like I'm the... I'm sure it happens. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. You see how many drunk drivers there are? Yeah. It's all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure as a bartender, there's so many people coming and going mm -hmm. in busier bars that it's hard to take notice mm -hmm. of who's drunk and who's not. So at mm -hmm. that point, you really are just doing your job. Because mm -hmm. you're like one more removed from the problem. But if you're like in a slow pace bar where like you know the people, like cheers, mm -hmm. and someone leaves drunk, hey, come back, let's call a cab. Yeah. I feel like that would sort of be the bartender's responsibility. Not necessarily legal, but socially, mm -hmm. the bartender's responsibility. Yeah, well, okay, so, so let's take it back one step and say that he doesn't drive drunk and hit someone, but he still his life is still definitely going down the tubes. Like it's definitely ruining his life. At what point do you say no more? Yeah, at what point do you say I'm not serving you? Do you watch you watch Bob's Burgers sometimes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an episode where his buddy, the plumber, comes in and like has like a heart attack or something. So he yeah. tries to feed him non hamburger hamburgers. Mm -hmm. And like he refuses to eat the yeah, yeah, burgers yeah. and like eats it in the bathroom and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's tough because there's there's me and then there's what actually probably is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I mean, care. I, I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like that's on you, buddy. But if it were my let's say it was you. Mm -hmm. I'd have a conversation with you. If it was a friend of mine, it's a conversation. Right. But if it's a dude that just comes into the bar sometimes, fuck off, dude. Is but, it reasonable to say that the, the people that this guy is, or the hypothetical dope slinger, are not his friends? That's, that's another conversation, because only dope dealers consider their clients friends. They're the only people that are like, yeah, man, you come over and pick up a dime, and then we'll hang. It's like... <laughs> I'll do that because you're giving me free weed, but I'm not actually going to hang out. Like, I don't want mm -hmm. to. And mm -hmm. that's the only person in the world that does that. Like, your, yeah. your car guy doesn't say, yeah, come over, I'll sell you a car, and then we'll chill. Mm. Or, like, the... Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's, say, let's say crack or whatever. Like, not okay. necessarily, you know what I mean? Like Some, Something I've never done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They're presumably not your friends. <sighs> it's, it's, that's tough. I'd have to think of honestly I, I wouldn't do it because I know that it, it does mm -hmm. and I have seen it happen mm -hmm. and because I have seen it it puts a bias in my brain where I can't look at it uh, objectively mm -hmm. because I've seen somebody get addicted and it ruined mm -hmm. their life I think a comp uh, like a, a counter is that alcohol is a far milder toxin B big, and it, big and time, yeah. for your for your life to go down the tube generally speaking for your life to go down the tubes due to alcohol takes yeah, but years. I would probably work better high on crack cocaine than I would when I'm drunk. I mean, <laughs> probably prob twice maybe, as fast. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't. I don't know either. I'm just um, so those guys, those guards holding the guns, they, the yeah, they. Do you feel like they're having the same conscious thought in their head? Or is it just easily dismissed? Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if they have that conscious thought. Um, I don't, I think that uh, they're just, yeah, they're, they're, just, they're just doing their job. And so, like, there is enough de degrees of separation that blameworthiness, uh, which is a technical term, uh, blameworthiness is not applicable to them. Okay. And I don't, I don't know that I necessarily disagree with them. Um, because I don't know how many degrees blameworthiness can, yeah, can last. Okay. Yeah, 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 that makes total sense. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for listening. This has yeah. been Things We Talk About. Oh